morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the call uh, to the class today. I've just uh, started the recording of this class, this lecture, and uh, we will pray and get started. Paul, if you want, I know you're. It's three thirty, probably three thirty in the morning. You can turn your video off, Paul, level two, if you want to. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but thank you for connecting. Uh, I know it's very, very early over there. And God bless you. Okay. Um, God bless you. All right. Um, let's pray. And then we will get started. And um, I'm sure this will join the class in a minute or so. Um, all right, uh, let's uh, invite uh, somebody, um, Brother Manohar, would you uh, please like to pray and we will get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning, a grace to study and learn from you, Lord. Lord, it is a study of your word and going deeper into thy word, Father. Lord, that enables us for the ministry. Lord, as we are studying the subject of faith, Father, we know too much about it, but we fail to practice it, Lord. Lord, through this impartation of this teaching, Lord, that whatever we have learned and whatever we know and whatever we hear now in this class, we may implement in our life, our faith may be perfected, Father. Lord, as Abraham had great faith, help each and every one of us to develop in the same faith so that we may walk, Lord, in the authority and the ministry that you have given to us in this, in this, in this world. Lord, we commit this class, we commit the pastor and everyone who is joined to this class into thy hand. Lord, speak to us, Father, strengthen our faith, build us up and place us upon a rock, Lord, in the faith and use us mightily in the ministry. In, this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Manor. And welcome again, everyone. Thank you for connecting to the class. Uh, we started this course on uh, faith uh, last week. We gave a bit of introduction and we were still in the first chapter on the introduction, just covering some uh, foundational aspects on faith. And I'm just going to quickly uh, review uh, some of the things we did last week, and then we're going to go forward. I've um, uh, shared the notes for chapter two as well as for chapter three. Uh, we will see how far we get today. Um, I'm hoping we will be able to finish chapter two uh, today and get started with chapter three. So I've put the uh, the lecture notes for both of them in the Yeah, today I've been having some challenges here with the network. Just want to make sure things don't drop off. Okay. All right. So let me just go ahead and share my uh, screen. And we will just quickly review some of the things we did last week uh, in our introduction. So we went through the definition of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. We spent actually quite a lot of time um, on Hebrews 11, 1, trying to understanding uh, what faith is. We mentioned that faith and I believe, they come from the same root word. Faith is a noun, believe is a verb. And um, so we are going to use them uh, almost synonymously uh, as we communicate. So we went through Hebrews 11. One, we talked about other aspects of faith, and that faith connects us with God. Uh, we are people who live in this natural world, but our faith in God gives us the ability to connect with him and thereby work with him and experience his work in our lives. We also said based on Hebrews 11.6 that uh, faith 
pleases God. God is pleased when he sees us have faith in him. We said that faith is in the person of Jesus Christ. I'm just quickly reviewing, uh, and you're, you're welcome to uh, listen to last week's uh, you know, lecture videos in case you would need to review any of these things. Um, we said faith is in the person of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the originator and the completer. Uh, and so faith is not uh, you know, some sort of a mind game that we are playing. It is in God himself, the one uh, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We also said faith is based on relationships. So it's something that we, that develops, you know, just as relationship develops. You know, as our relationship with God becomes stronger, we under, uh, know him better. Then our faith in him also gets stronger. Uh, and so faith is based on relationship. We also said faith is of the heart. So uh, many times... Um, uh, we believe in God and we believe his word, even when it is contradictory to our mind. You know, uh, 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 faith is not always comprehensible uh, to our mind. You know, we can believe God and not necessarily um, explain everything with our mind. You know, but faith is of the heart and we are, are, are spirit beings. We have spirit, soul and body. And so our heart or our spirit can believe God, even though there are things our mind will never understand and our mind will never be able to explain. But faith is of the heart. And we said that God calls us to live by faith. That's the way he wants us to live. He says, you know, the just will live by faith. So this is how we live. We walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, we then also said that faith is conceived and nurtured by the word of God. So the word of God is very foundational. We, we read the word of God. It helps us to know God. It also helps us to know what he has promised, what he said he will do. And therefore we believe that. And so the word of God is what conceives faith and what nurtures faith. It's the basis of our faith. So we're not just, you know, faith is not whimsical. It's not something uh, I fancy and I imagine and I just make myself believe it. No, faith is based on God's word. God is truth. So everything he speaks is truth. And truth can be relied upon. We know truth will not fail. This is absolute. We can depend on it. And so we trust in his word. And then when you have faith in the word, it is having faith in God himself because you are, you know, you're expressing trust in the one who spoke the word when you trust his word. So uh, when we have faith in the word, we are saying, God, I have faith in you. That's what we are saying. So faith in the word is faith in God. So when you believe the word, say, God, this is what you said. I'm going to believe it. I believe it. I'm resting my life on this. And, uh, you, your word is truth. And that is an expression of our faith in God himself. And um, we also said faith is like a muscle. It grows as we exercise it. So we just keep using our faith, right? Um, we talked, we mentioned about the Thessalonians, how their faith was growing exceedingly. So day by day, their faith in God increases and faith grows. Um, we also said several factors influence faith. So faith needs a healthy environment in which it can thrive. And we see in scripture, you know, he says, add to your faith all these other things. So virtue, which is uh, your character, knowledge, self-control, perseverance or, or endurance, godliness, that is living godly, brotherly kindness, and love. So, you know, so um, the, this is the environment in which faith is nurtured. So walk in these things so our faith can grow and faith can be fruitful. So we mentioned that. And um, uh, this is where we paused last week at the bottom of page 12. Actually, it's the last point. 
But let's start and let's just spend a moment here on this last point and then we will get into chapter two. So what we must understand is that faith causes the power of God and his word to be released. When we believe God and we believe his word, that in some way, and I'm just using this as an analogy, so uh, sometimes uh, you know uh, our, our, our analogies uh, can be used only to a certain extent. So you know, to some extent, it is right to say that faith is like a switch, that when we have faith in God, it's like I'm turning the switch on so the power of God can flow. Right, but don't think that faith is just a mechanism. A switch often represents a mechanism. You know, like that's why we emphasized earlier that faith is a relationship. Faith is something that is based on God's word and grows. Right. So, but it is true that faith is like a switch. That when we connect with God through faith, we are giving God is like at on the switch on. So now it is possible for the power of God to flow into my life, into our lives and uh, cause something to happen. So let's, could somebody read 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11? It's right there on the, in the PDF notes that if you're following, but it just, you know, just good to read scripture. So could somebody read that for us, please, out loud? Therefore, we also, sorry. Therefore, we also pray always for you that are God, will count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Thank you. So the Apostle Paul is praying. Uh, he mentions different things that he's praying for, the, for these believers who are in Thessalonica. And I just want to focus on the latter part of that verse where he's saying we're praying that God would fulfill or God would complete the work of faith with power. So when we work our faith, that is when we do something out of faith. So work of faith simply means you're doing something because you have faith in God. Right? So the work of faith, faith. Um, so the work of faith says, okay, um, I think somebody needs to mute oh, their oh, mic. Yeah, yes. um, okay. All right. Well, let me just mute their mic. Uh, okay. I wasn't sure. All right. Can we all keep our mic on mute so we don't get disturbed? All right. Um, let me go back here. Okay, let me do this again. All right, let's go back. So everyone, please keep your mics on mute so we don't interrupt the class. Okay, so what we were saying is this. The work of faith simply means I'm doing something because I have faith in God. And Paul is praying, you, you do your work of faith and we are praying that God will complete your work of faith with power. So, so obviously he's praying for something that's right. Uh, and, and, and he's praying because he knows this is how God works. What happens when we work our faith, God fulfills or God completes our work, which we are doing. out of faith, 
with his power. So that's what we can expect. That when we work our faith, we step out, we're doing something, but because of the faith in God, we can expect God's power to bring that work to completion. The power of God is released when we uh, step out in faith. And let's read a few more scriptures that's on the top of uh, the next page. Uh, somebody could read both these scriptures for us, please. Luke 145 and also Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, please. Um, okay, uh, let's read those two verses of scripture. Luke chapter 1, verse 45, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. Uh, let's just read again. I'm sorry about the interruption in between. Let's, let's do that again, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think, Devia, you were going to read. Yeah. Yeah, sure. He, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 45. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Amen. All right, so let's look at these two verses. Okay, so the point I want to emphasize here uh, in the last point here, chapter one, is that you know, our faith in God is what enables the power of God or causes the power of God to release. So that's why faith in God and faith in His Word is so important, right? So when we have faith in God and we work our faith, then His power is released. But we may hear the Word, but if we don't have faith in that word, then that word that we hear will not profit us. It will not benefit us. Okay. So uh, having said that so far, uh, we've just you know covered different aspects of faith. Now we're going to go into chapter two. And uh, I've put out the chapter two notes in the coursework section. And we're going to start, you know, uh, learning about how to walk by faith and how to exercise faith and so on. We're going to go into that. But now in chapter two, we're going to answer uh, a, a very, it is, it is both a simple question and yet it is some, something very profound. Uh, the question that many people ask, and I think uh, somebody had presented this question uh, in the class uh, last week. Um, uh, uh, the question is about God's sovereignty, grace, and faith. So in chapter 2, we are going to... God, is a grace, God, God of grace, and uh, he gives to us, you know, whatever... He gives to us freely by his grace. So if God is giving to us by grace, really, why should we have faith? All right. So what we want to understand today is how does the sovereignty of God, how does the grace of God and us having faith in God, how, you know, how does all these work together? What I want us to understand is that uh, these do not exclude each other. That means uh, God is sovereign, but God doesn't say, hey, I am sovereign, you don't need to have faith. He doesn't say that. As we have already seen, God invites us to have faith. He says, he teaches us, you must walk by faith. And he tells us, look, you're, you know, I'm pleased when I see you have faith. So the sovereignty of God doesn't exclude faith in God, doesn't do away with faith in God. Neither does grace do away with faith. What we will learn is that God gives to us and he gives to everybody freely by grace, but he wants each individual to receive by faith. You know, so what God makes available, he makes available to 
everyone freely by grace. But at an individual level, he says, or he requires that each one of us receive through faith, right? So God is sovereign, God is gracious, and he requires us to have faith. So that, that is the norm. The norm is we receive by faith what God gives freely by grace. But then God is sovereign. So there are times when God in his sovereignty can do something out of the norm that we refer to that as the exception. That means somebody may not necessarily have faith, but you know, that person experiences something special from God. And that is a sovereign work of God, right? And that is God does it because he chooses to do that, right? So let's talk a little bit about these three aspects. And just, you know, I've just, you know, I've just given you an overview of this and we will tie these together, right? So about, as far as God's sovereignty is concerned, uh, he is ruler, he is master. And uh, there are several scriptures that uh, talk about the sovereignty of God. Uh, and uh, we will just, you know, I'll just read some of these. And these are in your notes, uh, in, the, in the lecture notes that have been given to you. In Job 42, verse 2, Job 42, verse 2, the scripture, Job is saying, I know that you can do everything. And no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. So Job is saying, God, I, I know you can do everything. There's nothing can, you can, nobody can stop you. No purpose of yours can be withheld. So God is sovereign, God is powerful, and nobody can stop him. Uh, another scripture, Psalm 115 and verse 3, God is in heaven, he does whatever he pleases. So God is in heaven. And he does whatever he pleases. So God can do whatever he pleases. You know, so nobody can question God. Nobody can put God in a box and say, you know, only this is all that God can do. And he cannot do these things. You know, God does whatever he pleases because he is sovereign. So that the scriptures are very clear about. And we also must be very clear about that. God is sovereign. Secondly, the scriptures also tell us that God is a very gracious God. He's a compassionate God. Right? So uh, again, we're looking at certain scriptures here. Now, oh, this is on your uh, notes. Uh, Psalm 86, verse 15. The psalmist says, God, you are full of compassion. You're gracious. You're long-suffering. You're abundant in mercy. So who is God? He is a God who is compassionate, he's gracious, he's uh, very patient, he's abundant in mercy. So God is gracious. He's a God who is loving, he's a God who is generous, and there is no partiality with God. Right? So we uh, I've put two scriptures there, uh, Acts 34, Romans, and Romans 2, 11. Both the scriptures tell us God is not partial, uh, or they're, they're, God is not respect of persons. He does not have any favorites. He's an impartial God. So in his grace, or let me put it like this, his grace is available to everybody equally. God is not going to you know, offer more to one or, and less to the other. No, God is gracious and he's good to all. And he, has, he, is, he is no respecter of persons. So then, there is the sovereignty of God, which is God is all-powerful and he can do as he pleases. There is the grace of God, which is God is a generous, good God, and he is impartial in his grace. Now, having understood the sovereignty and the grace of God, it is a wrong posture to state that, well, God is sovereign, God is gracious, so I'll just sit down and just wait for him to, you know, put things on my life. 
and uh, if he wants to, he will do it. Now that's a wrong posture. What we see the scripture teaching us is, we recognize the sovereignty of God, he's all powerful. We also recognize the grace of God and every person is given equal opportunity to come to God by faith. So that's the only thing he's saying. You know, we all come on the same grounds that is of faith. And on and God says, you know, that's the only thing I'm asking all of you. Come to me in faith. I am sovereign. I can do anything. I'm gracious. I'm no, I'm not partial to anybody. But I want every person to come to me in faith. That's the only thing. And whoever comes in faith, whoever comes believing God on his terms, they will receive out of the power of God and his grace, they will receive. So this aspect of faith puts all of us on equal ground because God is not, God is not partial. So faith really is, you know, what we could say, it levels the playing field, so to speak. That means all of us, you know, regardless of our background, regardless of who we are, we all have to come to God by faith. He is a sovereign God. He's a God of grace. But he says, I, I, I want everyone to come to me with faith in their hearts. And so that's what we see in Scripture, that uh, uh, both in the Old and then the New Testament, that people came to him in faith and he responded to the faith that was in their hearts. And where there was a lack of faith, it actually hindered him from doing what he wanted to do for people in his grace. So God is gracious. He wants to do good things. But when there is unbelief, he's unable to release the good things to them. Not because he, he is lacking in grace, not because he is weak in power, but simply because the people didn't come to him on his terms, which is come to me in faith. So, we even see in Mark chapter 6, verse 1 to 6, and the same things recorded for us in Matthew 13, 57 to 58. I've skipped down a few pages. Um, uh, I'm actually on page 17 there in Matthew 13, verse 57 and 58. Uh, it says that, you know, when Jesus went to his own hometown, his own country, he could not do any mighty, he could not do many mighty works because of their unbelief. So you imagine Jesus, he's been healing, he's been delivering people, he's been doing so much everywhere. He comes to his own hometown. He comes to Nazareth, his own hometown. And in his own hometown, he's not able to do, he doesn't do many mighty works, not because he doesn't love the people, but it says because of their unbelief. And, you know, because they didn't believe this, they said, hey, we know Jesus. He grew up here. Uh, we've seen him as a child. We've seen him as a kid. We've seen him as a young person. And now he's a preacher. Now he's doing all of, you know, he's doing all of these mir miraculous things. And they couldn't open up to receive. And so in his own hometown, he could not do many mighty works, the scripture says, because of their unbelief. So in this chapter, I just want to impress on our, on our understanding that 
and I'm just going to repeat this and we will have some time for questions, is that God is sovereign, that is God is powerful and God is a God of grace. He is very generous, kind and he's impartial. So everything he offers by grace, he makes it equally available to every person. But there's one thing he's asking all of us to do, which is to come to him in faith. So that puts all of us on equal ground. And whoever comes to him in faith receives what he offers to us freely by grace. So this is what I just wanted to impress on our hearts and minds in our understanding as we begin to go in to study on faith. So this gives us the importance of faith. We, want, we need to recognize the importance of having faith in God while we are aware that God is sovereign and God is gracious. We are not denying the sovereignty of God, that he's all powerful, he's ruler, he's king, and he will do whatever he pleases. We're not taking away from the grace of God, that God is a good God, a loving God, and a, and a gracious God. What we are saying is, in the Bible, God is teaching us that he wants all of us to come to him in faith in order to receive what he offers freely by grace. Any questions on that? Any Anything you want to discuss on that? And, I, and I've quickly gone through chapter two, uh, but um, and I know we also have these connection problems in between. Uh, I, I'm sorry about that, but uh, uh, you know, let's say uh, if there are any questions, uh, you can ask, you can unmute your mic and ask or type it in the chat and you know, we can discuss this, this aspect of God's sovereignty, God's grace and our faith. Did everyone understand this? Is it clear? Pastor, I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the grace that is uh, given equally to everyone, is it the grace to believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior? That's one of my questions. And second is um, uh, each, each of us will be having a different calling, right? So uh, is this grace talking about the divine empowerment that God... <clears throat> Uh, gives us for that particular calling. Hmm. All right. So, in in the context in what what we what I was talking uh, when I was using grace, uh, I was just talking about God's goodness, what He gives to us um, freely uh, in terms of His blessing, in terms of His uh, provisions into our lives in terms of uh, his work in our lives, right? So the word grace is also used to talk about giftings. The word grace in the New Testament is also used to talk about empowering for ministry, right? So, uh, and, and the word grace is also used to talk in the, in the context of grace as in character, right? Um, so the word grace uh, is used in different contexts. Like it, if it's used to, in the context of uh, in, uh, talking about how we live, it's, talk it's, it's, it's talking about character. If it talks about uh, manifesting the spirit, then it's talking about, you know, giftings. When it talks about doing the ministry, it talks about empowering. But I was using it in the context of God giving things into our lives you know, the provisions he makes, the blessings he releases, which includes salvation, healing, uh, deliverance, um, uh, financial provision, uh, divine protection, everything, you know, all of these blessings, you know, uh, are, uh, uh, it, 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 it was in that context that I was using this word grace. So, uh, God gives all of this to us freely by grace.
grace, salvation, healing, deliverance, provision. He gives to us. It's a, it's a work of His grace. Okay, okay, Pastor. Now it's clear. Thank you. All right. All right. I see uh, another question. Uh, when we pray for someone, we know we should believe in prayer irrespective of the other person's faith. What could be the reason for Jesus not doing miracles here with his faith? Uh, so that's a good question. So the norm is, so when God works healings, and it's okay, when you look at the ministry of Jesus, uh, in the ministry of Jesus, we see norm and exception. And you will learn about this in, uh, uh, in the course on healing and deliverance, um, that there is the norm. The norm is, he ministers or he gives to us, like we're saying, by his power and his grace, and we come and receive by faith. So in the ministry of Jesus, the, the norm in his ministry was everyone who came to him in faith, they received. And in fact, the next chapter deals with that. What did Jesus teach about faith through his teaching and ministry. That's the very next chapter, which we will get into after break. And what we will see is in his ministry, in the ministry of Jesus, the norm was everyone who came to him in faith received. Now there were exceptions. That means the exceptions were even when somebody didn't have faith, there was a miracle that was ministered. Like we see in uh, you know, and, 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 and okay, Lazarus, he was a dead man. Je Jesus raised him from the dead. In, uh, 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 in the case of the man by the pool of Bethesda, that man didn't even know who Jesus was. But in the case of Jairus, Jesus told Jairus, fear not, only believe. So Jairus was a man, and Jesus called him into faith. Fear not, only believe. So Jairus believed or in the case of the paralyzed man, the four friends believed. You know, it says Jesus saw their faith. Uh, so, so that's the norm. We see the norm. The norm is Jairus believed. Uh, uh, in the case of the paralyzed man, the four friends believed, and that's why they brought him. But in the case of uh, the man by the pool of Bethesda, <clears throat> or the blind man in John chapter 9, uh, we, they, they didn't even know who Jesus was, and yet he healed them. So that, those are exceptions. So those exceptions remind us that God is sovereign. And those exceptions will still happen today. But the norm is everyone must come by faith to Jesus. Now, why does God do the exceptions? Because he's sovereign. He will do as he pleases. Why does he not do that to everybody? Because he has put a norm in place. And the norm is we must all come to him in faith to receive what he freely offers by grace. Is that okay? So we must understand uh, these two things. Okay. So let's pause for a quick 10 minute break. I once again apologize for the spatchy connection this morning. I um, hope things will get better. Uh, we will take a quick 10-minute break and come back. And after, after the break, we're getting to, going to get into Chapter 3, where we talk about what Jesus taught about faith. So the best person to go and learn about faith is from Jesus himself. So that's what we're going to do in Chapter 3, see what he taught us about faith. It's a really exciting chapter. Okay, So take a good 10-minute break, refresh yourself, I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye now.